back in processing, uh, still doing for loops and graphics. And uh, so I have a few more examples uh, to do with that. And um, I'm also going to bring in some variable stuff to make it more interesting. And so let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, right now I'm looking at this example in Chapter 4. It's called Pins and Lines. And I have already have copied this sketch over here into the sketch window. And, and I've actually changed a couple things, which I'll talk about. But first, let's just look at this. Okay, we set the size 480 by 120. Okay, background is black. Now we're going to fill. So uh, lines and whatever that we draw after this fill statement are going to be 255, which is white. Um, stroke 102. So this is um, um, stroke 102. Uh, that's a color on the uh, on that stroke, is it? We'll, we'll find. Let's check that when we run the code. And we have our two four loops. One goes over Y, which is going down like this, and the other X, which is going across like this. So we start off with Y equal 20, which is the coordinate right there where that first dot is. And, um, and then we look at the extent in the Y direction, which is the variable height, and we subtract off 20. So now we change Y by adding 10 to it every time through the loop. And when the value of Y um, becomes greater than height minus 20, this loop stops executing. So this is the loop that goes down in the Y direction. And then for each value of Y here, we have a loop that goes in the X direction. It's similar starts off at 20, and then when x becomes greater than the width minus 20, uh, the loop stops. And we do x equals, uh, x plus equals 10. So x is also being incremented by 10. Then we draw a uh, an ellipse. So we draw these little circles here with coordinates x and y. So each coordinate x and y produced here and we draw an ellipse that has a circle that has diameter 4. And then we draw a line that connects each circle to the center point right here. So we go from coordinate x, y to coordinate 240, 60. What's 240, 60? 240 is half of 480, and 60 is half of 120. So it's exactly the center of the display window. So that's what we're doing there. And I've copied the code over. Now let me run it. And you see that we, we get that figure here, like we would hope to get. But I made some changes. Um, a couple simple changes here, where I've noticed that the width parameter is 480 and the height is 120. Now notice we use those variables here and here. But as I've noted, 240 is half of the width of the of the sketch window there. 60 is half of the height. So I've replaced 240 and 60 in my code by width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. Okay. Now doing that allows me to change the size of the window and still get a similar drawing. So for example, let me change the height from 120 to 480. 480, like that. So I do that, run the code, and indeed, I still get the lines going from each circle to the center. Now what would happen if I hadn't made these two changes? If I kept this at 240, 240, and kept this at 60. If I run the code, here's what would happen. So I'm still generating the points at all the correct locations, except now 
the end point of each of the lines is right up here and it's not the center of the window. Okay, so let me go back to width over 2 and height over 2. And notice when I type in a word which is a correct value uh, in processing, um, the, uh, the IDE uh, changes the color. So that way I know this is a legitimate parameter as defined in the processing language. Now I can run it and I get this shape right here. Now I could, uh, uh, I could probably do some other things here, but uh, uh, I'm not going to do it. I just wanted to point this out to you that what these values were and a way we could replace them with variables. That way we can change these two parameters in any way we want and uh, we still get a very similar kind of graphic produced. Okay with that. So now let's uh, look at the next example, half tone dots. I'm not going to go into this in great detail. Uh, it's a simple program uh, and I think you can uh, deal with it yourself. But let's just graph it out. Okay, I'm going to copy that and put it in the sketch window. Okay, now notice that because it doesn't quite copy right, I have to go in. I have to do that there. I have to add a space in here. I'm going to add a space in there and there. Add a space in here. Add a space in here and here. I'm going to pull this down there. I'm going to pull this down there. And then I'm going to do the indentation here. OK, so that should be about right. That kind of looks what I have here. OK, now this uses height and width again. And here we're drawing these ellipses. Uh, where the uh, the center and the, the center of the ellipses and their diameters are um, are both dependent on the variable y, which is uh, in the first and the top outside in the outside for loop. This for loop runs from here to here. So as before, we first pick a value for y, then we run through the entire x for loop. Then when that's done, we go back and pick the next value for y, and so on. So we run that, and we get this code right here. So um, I um, now notice that um, because we're subtracting this off, if y gets too large, we would be getting ellipses that have a negative radius. Um, I'm just curious as to how that might happen. So let me uh, let me try increasing this height, which will allow us to get larger values of y. So let me change it to 800. How's that? Wow. Okay. Run. Wow. Look at that. So we get down here. And uh, it's coming down a diagonal. I uh, wonder what's happening right in here. My guess is that right in here, maybe this is about where, this looks to me about where the values of y are becoming negative. So it might be interesting to investigate this phenomena a little bit more. What happens when we have to draw an ellipse with a negative value? Maybe I'll put that in the homework, which I haven't defined yet. So let me go back to 120 here and run. There we go. Now I'm going to save this file. Save as halftone dots. There. So I'm saving it so I can pull it up at some point down the road if I need to. 
Okay, now, here's that robot again. And um, this is, again, an example where we can change variables. And what I've done here is I've actually copied over the sketch. This is the whole sketch here. This is a little bit different, I think, than the earlier sketch we had for the robot. I'm not sure how different. OK, now, there are four sets of parameters. And each set of parameters defines a slightly different robot. Maybe this does that, this does that, this does that, and this does that, something like that. OK. So first, let me just run the, the sketch here that I've copied to see how it's working. And we get this. It's the first robot right here. See that right there, that. OK, great. Now, we have these variables up here in the beginning of the sketch. And where we set y equal to 390, body height 180, neck height 40. Y equals 390, body height 180, neck height 40. What happens if I change to these values? Do I get this one? Let's try that. Y equals 460. There's 460. Uh, 260 for body height and neck height 95. Now let me run. And indeed, we get that second we get that second sketch. So the whole purpose, I think, of this is to show you how complex diagrams uh, can be uh, modified easily if we are clever in how we define variables and then use them in the sketch. So, um, so that's that. Now, I think that's, that's really actually everything I want to talk about right here. Okay, now, let me, uh, let me just close this out, save, and let me open up another window, new. Now let's see, I said, what happens when we do an ellipse that has negative? So, Let's do, um, let's go back up here. Let's do size, size 480. I'll do 480 comma 480, big window, semicolon. Background. zero semicolon and now I'm just going to put in an ellipse function okay ellipse and I'll put the center of the ellipse right in the straight 240 comma 240 so it's right in the center of the uh, sketch window and now, let me first draw it with uh, 100, comma 100, there, semicolon. So this should just draw me a circle right in the center of the window. There we go, right there. Great. Now, what happens if I put negative 100? Negative 100. There. So look at that. The negative numbers, uh, my guess is what happens, uh, well, let me put one negative and one positive. My guess is that there's probably some particular code where we can use where the fact that negative numbers uh, behave perhaps unexpectedly could be used to our advantage. Let me run this, and indeed, uh, it still plots out. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. I'm not quite sure what's happening internally, but uh, that's an interesting result. Okay, now 
Uh, so I'll finish right here. The next uh, thing we're going to cover right in here are the draw function. There's some pretty important stuff. And um, I'm going to be able to go over most of the pawn game that I've written in processing and show you that pawn, pawn game. Okay, so with that, uh, talk to you next time.